Okay, I'm live. Let's see if I can get this all on here. Hey, it's a person watching. Hello. Still getting the camera set up. <laughs> okay. Today we're going to be working on this, another ThinkPad T440P. Some of you might remember it from... There we go. Now you can see. My god-awful messy desk. Um, anyway, so this is a ThinkPad T440P that I showed a few months ago. I made a video where I fixed a T440P that had a flickering display. It had a bad display cable. And I took the display cable from this unit, which had a broken screen amongst other problems. And today I just have a bunch of parts here, and we're going to put it all together and make ourselves a nice little laptop. Um, a friend of mine wants a T440P, and so I'm getting it all set for him. So we do have a new display cable. I have a screen over on my desk, or on my table, whatever it's called. I'm going to put the new screen in here. And then... Um, if I can remember how to speak. I have a keyboard here. I have a touchpad. Uh, this is just a temporary solution. I am going to put a T450 touchpad in eventually. And also, this is missing a wireless card, so I'm going to need a wireless card. I'm going to put some RAM in. I'm going to repaste the CPU. And then I'm just putting an SSD in. He's only using this to take notes for school, so I'm just doing 128 gigs. Because you don't even really need more than that. Uh, so. Without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is install the new display cable. This is already taken apart because I've never put it back together after I took it apart to make the um, video. So I put the panel back in place for the uh, display cable, so I don't have to unscrew that. This is a very, very uh, clean setup here at the SETI's RAM Tech work desk. I take great pride in keeping everything organized and under control. So, I also, at some point in the last three months, lost the screws that hold everything together, so I had to order a replacement set of screws off of eBay. And then we also have to take off. Can we zoom this in? Yes, we can. So, I have to take off this little this screw here for the hinge. Or the hinge cover, I should say. So we can get our display cable in there. Okay. So here's our display cable. It's got the end that goes to the screen and the end that goes to the motherboard. So you just plug it into the motherboard. And that's not in there. <laughs> Definitely want to make sure that's plugged in. There we go. Then you just run it along the channel here. And then put it through up here. Right along. They have a little like channel you put the wire through. in place. We can put our hinge cover back on. This video is very exciting, I know guys.
Anybody commenting on the video? Any chats? Nobody appears in the chat. That's all right. I need to get better lighting for these videos, and then do more live streams. I've never done a live stream before. I think I try. Actually, no, I lied. I think I tried to do a live stream like a year ago or something. It just was a failure, so I haven't done one since. Because I don't like train wrecks. Snap in place. Display cable in there. And I think I've lost the screw. There we go. Just tighten up that screw there. Secure the little metal bracket that goes over the display cable port. There's two screws that hold that in. Now we're going to get our screen and put that in. Um, first, I need to take out the screws. I try to just set them in there so that when Lose them. Okay. Got ourselves this nice 14 inch 1080p screen. So, if there were a screen here, you would take out the four screws that hold it in, which are here, 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 and here. And then you would disconnect the display connector from the old screen which is right here. All right. So I'm gonna get the display out of its protective packaging. I actually, made a huge gamble here and just got the cheapest 1080p screen I could find on eBay for the T440p. And I actually bought from this bot or from this seller before. So it's very clearly an aftermarket panel, but it's an Intellux N140HC E N140HC A EAC Revision C4. And it is a matte finish, as all laptop displays should be. So we're just going to get our little display connector and pop her in. Want to make sure it's in the whole way, because if you don't, there's not a secure connection between the display and the display connector. We can have problems. And you just line up the... That's not good. <laughs> Got the hinge on the wrong side. There we go. Just line up the display with the screw holes. Make sure the hinges are in the correct place. 
and you get your four screws and you put them back in. Right. Our display is in. Just gotta line up the uh, display cable. Okay, now we put our display bezel. Peel off the protective film first. Ah, oh, that is such a pleasant feeling, removing the protective film off the display. Put it off to the side. We just pop our bezel back on. Start it again next door. You just want to check and make sure everything is in there securely. And there we go, we have a nice 1080p screen in there. Now, we need to hook up our touchpad and get our palm rest back in place. This particular model does not have the fingerprint reader, so it makes our job a little bit easier. Now this, oh, dropped a ribbon cable, don't want to do that. So this ribbon cable, this has a longer end here and it's labeled MB on it. Hello. Why do people hate math? That's a good question. I hate math too. Um, sorry, I'm reading the comments. How are the W's in terms of weight to power? Uh, the W's are pretty heavy, but they're very powerful. Um, the X series, all X series ThinkPads, the CPUs are soldered in. Um, this T440P has a socketed CPU. Um, this was the last generation that they were socketed uh, because Intel stopped making socketed laptop processors after the Haswell refresh. Um, any other indicators, lights, sounds, anything? Um, don't know what you're referring to there, but whatever. Anyway, so we have this ribbon cable. There's an end that's labeled MB. 
So that kind of just goes under, there's a very small little opening here. I'm not sure if you can even see it. There we go. There's a very small opening here that the cable goes under. You just push it through and then you can connect it to the motherboard. And then the other end's here for your touchpad. Uh, like I said, I am going to be putting a T450 touchpad in eventually, but it hasn't arrived yet. So just for the time being, I'm putting in the standard T440T touchpad. I'm not even going to bother screwing it in because I'm just going to take this whole thing apart again. So there's like no reason to. Um, I also should have mentioned it's usually easier to... There's a, there's a method to the madness. So first you want to get your touchpad and put it in, t or get your ribbon cable, I'm sorry, put it into the touchpad. Try and do this in a way that you'll be able to see it. I don't have like a viewfinder or anything I can look at, so I'm just kind of eyeballing and hoping that you can see. Okay, and put the flap down, and then you put it into the touchpad. Oops. Put the touchpad into the palm rest, I'm sorry. And then your cable kind of is sticking out the bottom. And then you take your ribbon cable and you stick it under. Sorry guys, can't see this. There we go. And then um, there's four screws that hold the touchpad in, but since I'm going to be replacing this as soon as the T450 touchpad gets here, I'm not going to bother because that's just a waste of time. And um, there's also a zillion screws that hold the palm rest in place, but again, I'm going to be taking this apart in like two days to replace the touchpad, so I'm not going to put the screws in for the palm rest. Just gonna snap this into place for the time being. Just so it's semi stable. Okay, that's good enough for me. And then your touchpad cable goes into this nice little port here on the motherboard. No. Need to do a ThinkPad W series of videos 2019 something. Will you still be making a second part for the ThinkPad T60 2018? Um, so the story behind that is I was working on that for a while, and then AA Computers and Tech uploaded his video, which was basically the exact same thing I was going to do. And then I got busy with finals for school and everything. And I was kind of like, I don't know if I want to make a video because AA Computers and Tech just did a video on it and it would be kind of redundant. But then again, when you think about it, Austin Evans and Linus Tech Tips upload videos on the exact same products the same day. So I guess it's not too unheard of for two YouTubers to do similar videos. And then I actually talked to AA Computers and Tech. He's a really cool guy. And he said there were some games he didn't get to cover that he uh, said maybe I could do. So I'm, like, still on the fence about if I even want to make a video about it. So, um, we'll just have to see. I've just had some trouble, um, finding the time to do the whole video because I've just been busy with school. And I have, like, five other video I'm tr videos I'm trying to do. Uh, so I decided to tide you guys over for a bit with this live stream. That's what this is all for. Um, thank you, Kenneth. <laughs> thank you. Um... Hey, Sebi, what third-party battery company do you recommend for the T400? I've actually never bought a third-party battery for the T400. I've only worked on one or two T400s. Um, there's re it's hard to say that there's really any specific third-party company that's good. Um, I'm actually, that's another video I'm trying to work on, is um, one where I talk about the benefits and disadvantages of third-party aftermarket batteries. Um, there aren't really, I can't really say there's one particular company that has better batteries than another. 
my best advice is to just look at reviews for whatever product it is. Uh, make sure they have a high number of reviews. Like if they have one five star review, that's kind of um, that's kind of uh, sketchy. But if they have like fifty good fifty reviews and it's like forty nine of them are four star and one's a one star, then that's probably a good indication that it's a good laptop. Um, what do you think about the new P one? Um, I've heard that Lenovo's had some issues with it, um, like laptops being bricked by changing BIOS settings and some other, like, thermal issues and stuff, but I haven't seen one hands-on, so I can't say what I think about it in an accurate sense, but, um, it's a, what's, what's the word? I don't know, it looks, it seems like a pretty decent laptop if Lenovo fine-tunes some of the issues they've been having with it. Same with the X1 Extreme, they both seem like they'd be really solid laptops if Lenovo could get some uh, of the little issues here and there figured out. Now I'm really hoping they release a follow-up to the X1 Extreme with the new RTX graphics cards. That'd be really cool. Nar Karmic Nerat. Sorry about that, repost your question for Seb, and I'll keep quiet, what? I'm confused. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna leave the touchpad here for now. We don't have to put that in right now. Um, we're gonna shift gears for a moment here and go to the other side of the machine. Now this machine does have a few cosmetic issues. There's a, a broken vent thing there. And also the bottom cover has a little broken piece on it. But my friend doesn't care, my friend doesn't really care about that, so. Yeah, I'm still waiting for a few parts to come in. I'm waiting for a hard drive caddy to come in. And, um, I'm waiting for a wireless card to come in, but I have another wireless card from a, another T440P, so I'll probably just use that one just for the sake of getting this thing working. This model does not have a dedicated GPU. I believe it has a Core i5-4200M in it right now. I'm going to be replacing it with a 4300M. Not that it's going to make a massive difference in performance, but, uh whatever. Um, I'm, I'm already taking this apart to repaste the CPU, so I figured I might as well. For some reason, this came with the battery, but the battery was disconnected from the motherboard, so that's kind of weird. I don't know why it's there. So, this supposedly belong, belonged to some company, cdw.com or something? I don't know. Alright, let's get this seamless battery in here. There, see my spider's in. Woohoo! I have two sticks of DDR3L RAM. One of the annoying aspects of the Haswell ThinkPads and the Broadwell ThinkPads, the T440, T450, they require that you use DDR3L RAM. Like, if I use some standard DDR3 RAM, like here, laptop won't start up. You have to use DDR3L, which is kind of annoying, but what can you do? Um... I have my trusty RTMX4 for the processor. Um, where did I put? Okay, I have a bag full of parts here. I'm like I said, I'm very organized here at Sebi's Random Tech. Um, where do you get all of your official Lenovo parts? eBay only. Um, yeah, I sort of just um. I just go on eBay for the most part. Sometimes I'll use Amazon. Sometimes other sites, but most of the time I just look on eBay. Um, you can find pretty much all of Lenovo's part numbers on their website for any laptop, which is nice. And they, um, you just type the part number in on eBay and you can find it. And a lot of times, like if you just type in ThinkPad T440P display cable, it'll come up. Or ThinkPad T440 palm rest. Those stuff come up. Those stuffs will come up. Have you considered making a Discord? Um, no, because Discord is pretty toxic sometimes, um, especially when you're playing Fortnite. Um, I have a T500 that starts but won't post. Power and Bluetooth lights come on. Any suggestions? Check the RAM. That's a good suggestion. Uh, try resetting the BIOS settings by removing the CMOS battery, and then you hold in the power button for like 40 sec 30 seconds or something. What do you think about the Lenovo SL410? Just bought one as a spare computer. Uh, they're not as well built as a T-series ThinkPad, but they're still pretty solid laptops. They have a lot of upgradability. Yeah, reseeing the CPU is also a good idea, William. 
Um, bear with me for a moment here. I'm trying to find my processors. I keep them all in a... Ah, here they are. I think I have a 4300M I can put in here. Yep. Core i5 4300M. Sweet. This currently has a 4200M. So it's not a massive difference. I think the only difference is like it's a little bit faster. It might have slightly higher turbo boost. But just to get put it in because I have it and it's nicer than the uh, current one. Let's put these parts off to the side. So removing the heat sink is pretty easy. There's four screws and they're numbered. So um, one, two, three, four. When you're taking it off, just go in reverse. So four. Can you guys see that okay? Okay, you can see. Three. Two. For some reason, two's already loose and that's kind of weird. One. And then you have your fan cable. Just pop that out. While you have... Ooh, yeah, look at how dirty that is. Ugh. So it's probably the logic board. How do I trust eBay? You don't. If the buyer or the seller gives you a problem, you just complain to them until um, eBay makes them refund you. Uh, the blessing and curse of eBay is that they almost always side with the buyer. And it's a blessing if you're a buyer and you buy something and they send you the wrong part or they send you something that's DOA, something like that. Um, and so, like, if they screw with you, then eBay will almost always side with you. And they'll make you get a refund or they'll have the seller give you a new item or whatever. It's a curse if you are the seller and you have legitimately sold something and then the buyer tries to screw with you. Like one time I had a MacBook A1342 and it had logic board problems. So I sold it on eBay as is four parts not working. And this guy bought it. He had it for about a month and then he said, um, oh, it's not working. It's not as described. And I'm like, what are you talking about? It's already broken. It's already not working. And eBay sided with him and without even telling me, they took the money out of my PayPal account and refunded him without even telling me, um, which is stupid because eBay's official policy is um, if you refund the buyer, wait until you receive the item back and then refund them. But in this case, I didn't have that choice. eBay just took the money out of my PayPal account without even telling me. So yeah, eBay is a blessing and a curse because if, if you're a buyer and you buy something and the seller screws up, you're going to be fine. But if you're a seller and you're trying to sell something, you will have a lot of people that will try to screw you over, as happened with me. So I lost $100 and a laptop. Um, T400P had a better quad-core CPU, higher quality casing. What? Oh, what's the difference between the T440 and the T440P? I can actually show you. So... This is a T440P, and I'm actually working on a video where I compare the T440 and the T440P. So the T440P is like built like a classic ThinkPad. You have this thick, heavy-duty case. It has the outer plastic hybrid whatever layer, the inner magnesium alloy roll cage. Very rugged, very durable. Um, it has mobile Intel CPUs, not Ultrabook CPUs. Uh, they are socketed, so they can be upgraded. And I actually have another T440P, which currently has a 4300M in it. And I'm going to be replacing it with a Core i7-4700MQ, which is a nice quad-core chip. Um, T440P also... I, actually, both of them have dedicated graphics. Both of them you can get with a GT730M graphics card. Um, but you'll get better results with the T440P because the processors are more powerful. The T440 has one upgradable RAM slot, and the other 4 gigabytes of RAM are soldered to the motherboard. Some cheaper configurations of the T440 don't have the soldered on RAM. So depending on your configuration, the T440, you're limited to 8 or 12 gigabytes of RAM. The T440P, you can upgrade to 16 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, T440P also has an optical drive, which the T440 does not. And you can, of course, swap this out for another hard drive bay if you want. 
Um, the T440P also uses the traditional six and nine cell batteries. Like, actually I have one on hand I can show you. So like here's the nine cell battery for a T440P. It's like any other ThinkPad battery. It sticks out the back and everything. Um, and the T440P was configurable from the factory with 1080p IPS displays. The T440 was not, but um, you can upgrade one, and I actually did that with mine. So here's a standard T440. It's a lot thinner than the T440P, and it doesn't have as much upgradability, uh, but it's much thinner and lighter, and that's nice for, like, schoolwork and stuff. They use the same keyboards, they use the same touchpads, they use the same screens, so you don't have to worry about the keyboard being any worse. Um, the T440 has an internal three-cell battery, and it also has an external battery. There's a three-cell battery that's flush with the back, and then the six-cell battery, which sticks out like this. Um, and it's nice because you can hot-swap the batteries. It drains the external battery first, and when it's um, drained, it moves to the internal battery. So you can actually swap out the batteries without the system shutting down. Um, I prefer the T440P just because of the better upgradability and more, better power. But the T440 is nice in that it is more portable and slimmer and all that. If you're going to buy an excellent example of a T440P on eBay, will it be a good price to look for? I don't want to overpay. Well, you can get one broken like me, like this was $50 broken, and upgrade it to whatever you want, really. I actually lucked out with another one. I have this other T440P, which if I take the bottom cover off... It has the uh, NVIDIA GT730 graphics, so it's actually a pretty significant graphics bump over the Intel HD 4600 graphics. Uh, but you can find them broken for pretty, uh, pretty cheap. Um, if you get one that's fully working, it'll probably be somewhere between $150-$200. Uh, the higher-end configurations with... Uh, like a quad-core i7 and a 1080p IPS display and 16 gigabytes of RAM, those will be more. Uh, but yeah, the one guy said he just paid $150 for one. And then, yes, the T440 is basically an S model, but they actually made another T440 called the T440S. And it's very similar to the T440, except it's a little bit thinner, a little bit lighter, uses some more premium quote-unquote materials and it was available with the 1080p screen, while the standard T440 was not. But like I said, you can upgrade a T440 to an IPS screen. T440S also has an additional USB port right here, which is not present on the T440. And, um, yeah, so T440S is very similar to the T440, except it's a little bit slimmer. Um, okay, so let's get back into upgrading the processor. Ugh. I have to kind of climb over everything. This is a small room and got the tripod set up. It takes up a ton of space. So, for upgrading the processor, the T440P actually uses a Torx screw bit to hold the processor in place. Do I have? Nah, it's too small. So, if you have like a precision screwdriver set, just find a Torx screw bit. So a little too big. <laughs> there we go. Just need a Torx screwdriver. Torx bit. Just unlock it. Take the old processor out. And then, this is a 4300M I pulled from another T440P. So it has some old thermal paste on it. Uh, like any other laptop processor, you just line up the you even see the golden triangle, you just line it up with the appropriate triangle on the uh, CPU slot, and there it just slid right in. And you lock it in place. The only time you ever need a torque screwdriver when you're taking apart a ThinkPad. Um, since this does have old thermal paste on it, as does the cooling assembly, I will be uh, cleaning them off. I use 91% rubbing alcohol. You can use other materials. And then I just use a standard paper towel. Some people say you don't want to use them because parts of the paper towel can flake off and affect the thermal performance. I haven't had that issue. I've repasted 
probably over a hundred different processors. I've never had that issue. They, some people say coffee filters are a little bit better. But again, I have not had any issues with that. So I just use a paper towel. You just put a little bit of rubbing alcohol on and get all the old thermal paste off. Sometimes it'll stick to the processor. You just kind of kind of pick it up with your fingers. Throw that away. You're most concerned about getting the old paste off of the actual dye, which is the shiny part. Uh, but it's usually a good idea to get all of the old paste off. I also want to be careful, uh, there's some very tiny little like solder joints and stuff along here that you want to not break. You don't want to break the processor. And then we'll also make sure to get the cooling assembly. And I didn't even get any alcohol in there. There we go. So just get some alcohol and get at it with your cooling assembly. And not knock over the laptop. You might need a couple paper towels to get the job done. That's okay. Also make sure to run a dry paper towel over everything once you've gotten all the old paste off just so that there's no remaining alcohol. Might get some thermal paste on your hands. That's okay. <laughs> Sometimes if the paste is sticking to the surface, I just run my finger over it and then, of course, make sure to properly clean that off. I'll just get one more paper towel. I'm very uh, liberal with my use of paper towels, um, even though that's probably bad for the environment. Just run it over one more time, make sure you got all the old paste off. Then you just get your new paste, in my case, my trusty Arctic MX-4. No, I'm not a paid endorser for them, and they're not sponsoring me. I just think they are reliable and fairly affordable. Um, I bought this tube quite a while ago, for like 7 or $8, and I've repasted probably two or three dozen computers with it. Because you don't need that. They give you a ton of thermal paste in those little tubes, and you really don't need that much. And also, while we have the um, cooling assembly off, might be a good idea to just get some compressed air. Get all that crap off. This one in particular has a decent amount of gunk on it. But yeah, just get some compressed air and blow at it. Anybody else commented? I bought my T400 from Laptop Experience off eBay and got a near mint laptop. I like buy units that are in mint condition. The broken ones seem to look like they have been heavy abused. Not exactly true. That other T440P I have was, I bought it broken for $67 and it looks almost brand new. Can you keep this live stream up on your channel so I can watch it again in the future? This video is awesome. Uh, no problem. Yeah, I'll try to keep it up. I think there's an option to do that. Better be. <laughs> okay. I think it saves them automatically, and then I can post them if I want to. Okay, so we have our new thermal paste on. We have all the old paste wiped off. You just kind of... goes in kind of weird. You, just, you have to, like, push it in there. Kind of. And then, uh, just put the screws in. One, two, three, four. I don't know why they have to be in that order, but they do. I don't know why screw number two wasn't tightened when I was loosening this. <sighs> and then make sure to plug your fan back in. That would be pretty bad if we didn't do that. Okay. Just run that back through there. Now I need to get a wireless card, because as you can see, this one is missing the wireless card. 
Is that the name of their eBay store? Laptop is here. Oh, okay. Um, so the wireless card would go here. Then you have a 42 millimeter M.2 slot. This is meant for network cards, like for broad or for LTE internet, like on the go internet. Uh, but these these can also be used for 42 millimeter SATA M.2 SSDs. And that's really nice because you can have an SSD and here's your boot drive and then have a nice big old hard drive here or a second SSD. And if you still need more storage, you can always swap out the optical drive for another hard drive. Uh, but I won't be putting one of these in here. I just have traditional two and a half inch SSD. But I just wanted to note that that is there as an upgrade option. Okay, so let's get the wireless card from my bag of goodies. Okay. Feel free to talk amongst yourselves while I'm getting situated here. Here's the wireless card. It's a really tiny little thing. It's an Intel brand. I believe you can get 802.11 AC cards for this. I can't say for sure, but I'm pretty sure you could. Pops in there. We're going to be borrowing the screw from the M.2 slot because the screw for the original wireless card is missing. Why would you remove a wireless card? Like, I get removing a hard drive, but why would someone get rid of a wireless card before they got rid of the computer? I don't get that. Okay. You just tighten the screw until it's tight. Screw in with confidence, as The Verge would say. Then you just get your two uh, wireless antenna cables. These are very, very tiny little connectors. They can be kind of a pain in the butt to get in place. So, you're not going to get the best angle. If these are extremely small. Ah! They're a pain in the butt. That's what they are. Mm. Okay, yeah. That's, that's too recessed. I'm going to try and install the cables before I put the wireless card in place. Because that thing is annoying. Oh, heartbroken alley. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're not going to have wireless. <laughs> Just kidding, I can use one of the other antennas. Okay, now we have that taken care of. Back in there, piece of shit. These connectors are like designed to be a pain in the butt. Stay in? Of course not. Of course not. Why would why would the cable stay in when I need it to stay in?
There we go. Stupid pings. And just to make things better, I lost the screw that holds the wireless card in place. This is why you invest in those magnetic bowls that keep all your stuff, all your screws. Because this is annoying. Okay. Just got a loose screw hanging around in there. Do the old, uh... Ah, oh, there it is. I see it. Where'd you go? Where'd you go, little screw? How you guys doing? Check the chat. My friend was talking about how his T420 is a heap of junk, but it's missing a stick of RAM and has two gigs. Well, that's why it's a problem. When you buy a computer like a T440P, well, how can you find out what aims you can upgrade? <clears throat> I like to upgrade features like thing with programmers. Um, Google. Press F for wireless card. Cool. So for those of you just tuning in or weren't paying attention, I dropped the screw for the wireless card somewhere into the chassis. And I don't feel like taking this whole thing apart just to locate it. So I'm just going to... Oh! Hey! <laughs> right when I was struggling the most, we got our screw. See, I didn't want to take this whole thing back apart just to locate a stinking wireless... Or a stinking screw, so just, just shake the computer until the screw comes out. That's what you do whenever you have a rattle in, in your computer. If your computer has a rattle, just shake it until whatever's making the noise falls out. I also need to invest in magnetic screwdrivers. Okay, we have our wireless card in. Uh, minus the uh, one wireless antenna, which unfortunately broke but that's okay because this has the auxiliary antennas for the um, LTE modem which we aren't installing and nobody's going to install okay now that that stress is over with let's install some RAM so yeah these are uh, two Four gigabyte sticks of DDR3L. They're SK Hynix brand, whatever that is. Just pop that in there. Like I said, this takes up to 16 gigabytes of RAM, but for my friend's usage, he won't need more than eight. In fact, even eight gigabytes might be a bit overkill for him. They just pop in like that, nothing to it. Everybody knows how to stick in RAM. And then, these, there's normally a hard drive caddy here, but mine is missing. I ordered one, it hasn't come yet. So, like half of the other parts for this, normally you would get your drive caddy. It's this, like, rubber-like material, and it goes around the edges here. And they just pop into the screw holes. They don't have to be screwed in. It's not like the, uh old hard drive caddies for the older thing pads where you had to screw the four screws in on each side and then put the rubber rails on and slide it in. Um, this is one aspect of newer thing pads I do think is easier uh, because for this you just get the rubber thing and literally just stick the four things into the screw holes and then you have yourself a caddy you just plop it in like that and then you screw the caddy in place with one screw. So, I'm also going to tighten down the optical drive. Uh, normally, there are a bunch of screws that hold the palm rest in. They're located pretty much along the outside edges here. And then there's also one underneath the optical drive. But like I said, since I'm going to be replacing the T440P uh, touchpad with the T450 touchpad as soon as the part comes, I'm not going to bother with that because that's wasting my time. 
And then this cover just slides back on like so. It's a little finicky because the uh, bottom part of it here broke. But yeah, it just slides up like that. And then there's two screws that go in here. When I bought this, this was broken and it didn't have the screws. But um, normally there'd be two screws there. There's also three screws up here that you have to take out to remove the polymers. But like I said, I'm not going to do that because that's excess of labor. And then last thing we're going to do is um, blow the dust off our brand new screen. Got the keyboard in. This is a backward keyboard. It's a little bit used, but it's in pretty decent shape. Do need to, uh... Where's my other screwdriver? It's somewhere around here. Ah, there it is. Also, we should probably put the cover back on the alcohol so we don't knock it over or something. So these T440 screw, or keyboards, they have these two little indents in the keyboard itself that you slide up to expose the screws. And for some reason this was slid down. There's also this little rubber piece, you don't want to forget to put this back in whenever you're working on the ThinkPad because if you don't put this back in, uh, so basically, if we look here, there's the roll cage. Uh, your keyboard and mouse connectors are right here, and this rubber piece goes over them to protect the motherboard from spills. So if you spill a liquid on here, it will go through the keyboard, and then it follows these channels out of the machine. Like, there's a hole right there, and where is the other one? There's one right there, and there's one right here. So... It follows these channels out of the machine, and this rubber piece protects the motherboard from getting exposed to the liquid. But if you don't have the rubber piece in there, nothing's stopping the liquid from going in and hurting the motherboard. So you want to make sure to put this back in. And if your computer doesn't have it, then get one. For some reason, the, uh, that's weird. For some reason, the, uh, keyboard is not lined up like it's supposed to be. Do I have another keyboard somewhere? I do have another keyboard. Let's take a look. Compare. I have a bunch of these keyboards. Guess we're gonna have to close some of my 54 Chrome tabs. Getting stream lag. The stream lag may not be your fault. Um, my internet connection here is awful. I call it piss poor internet or piss ass slow internet. How water resistant are ThinkPads in general? I have not tested that for myself, but Lewis Rossman dunked a whole bottle of water on his P50 and it worked perfectly fine for several months afterwards. Is Linux dying? Yes, it is. Just kidding. Yeah, I'm really sorry about the stream lag. It probably isn't your fault. It's probably just my poor internet connection. Um, basically, the apartment I'm staying in for school has really bad internet, and they really want you to buy your own internet. So, that's what that's all about. Okay. Yeah, so I have my, the ribbon cable for the keyboard was misaligned, so I was just checking to make sure I didn't screw anything up. I have a few other, this is a broken, whoops, this is a broken uh, T440 keyboard. I just use it for keycaps. I actually bought it, another T440 that was missing a few keycaps, so I just use this. And then this one is the non-backlit variant. You can see the um, difference in the keycaps. The non and then this one, this was from a T440 I 
fixed up about a year ago. Some of the keycaps actually melted a bit. They were exposed to too much heat. Anyway, so you just want to slide the uh, rubber piece, or sorry, slow, I can't talk today. You, you slide the uh, two uh, ribbon cables through the piece of rubber and get them all lined up. And then uh, it's just kind of a balancing game as you put these pieces in here. So there's two ribbon cables for the keyboard. One is for the track point and the other is for the keyboard. So I put tape over top of it for some reason. Maybe to help protect the motherboard in case the rubber piece fails to stop liquid from going in. That did not go in right. Let's try that again. Is that in there? It is. It is. Okay, we we'll get our other ribbon cable thing. Slide that in place. Want to make sure it's in the whole way so you don't run the risk of something not working. And then you take your plastic piece, which or rubber piece, which I so I'm a dumbass. I put the rubber piece on backwards. <laughs> so that means I have to take these cables back out and do this again. There we go. Now it's on right. No, it's not. Now it's on right. Third time's the charm. Okay. I will say, as much as the T440, as much as the T440P is upgradable and repairable, I do think in some aspects, some aspects it is easier. Like you just slide off the bottom cover, you can upgrade everything. That's fantastic. But um. The other aspects, like replacing the keyboard, like in the old, uh, like T430, T420, you just take out two screws and you can upgrade the keyboard um, or replace it. On this one, you have to take out, you have to slide up the hidden, you have to slide up this thing to reveal the hidden screws, take all the screws out, and um, yeah, it's a pain in the ass. Now, there are six screws here on the keyboard. They are held in by very tiny screws, so you... Woo! That's the second time I have dropped a T440P on video. We didn't break our screen, though, so that's good. Okay. Let's get my screwdriver. If I can... <laughs> I hope that was on video. If I have a few of the T440Ps, is there an easy way of knowing which... <laughs> is there an easy way of knowing which video card you have without installing the OS? It's actually very easy. I will bring back the T440P with the video card to show you. So... You can see here on this T440P that has the dedicated graphics, there is an extra fin on the cooling assembly going over this little chip here. This fin and this chip are not present on the Intel graphics models. So if it's an Intel graphics, it just has this. If it has a GPU, it will have this extra fin. So that's how you know the difference. I hope you guys saw me drop the machine. <laughs> Um, okay. I'm still trying to find my stinking screwdriver. Yeah, because the, um... These, anyway, back to what I was saying. These six screws that hold the... There it is. These six screws that hold the keyboard in place use very, very small, um, uh, Phillips screws. And if you use too big of a screw, you're gonna... Or too big of a screwdriver, you're going to strip the screws. And we don't want to do that. 
And I can't do this. <laughs> There we go. Okay. So we just take these six screws. So the one is located under the control key. And there's one placed under the S key. And then one under the F key. Press F for respect since I dropped this laptop. For the second time, this is the second time this laptop has been dropped on video. First time was in this live stream, the second time was, or the first time was when I was fixing the other T440P and I was borrowing apart from this. Second time was this live stream. Screw under the J key, screw under the colon key, and then a screw under the up arrow key. And then you just take the little indented thing. Get properly under there. And what do you know, we have ourselves a laptop with a broken chip key. I just broke the keyboard, that's great. I am not having a good time today. I think I just, yeah, I just broke the down key. That's the other thing about these newer things. Oh, maybe I didn't. Maybe it's good. These little uh, mechanisms that hold these in. Yeah, they're not very reliable. Or they're not very durable, like... Okay, let's try that. Can't tell if it's broken or not. Live coverage of Drop Laptop. Yep. I'll sell my soul to your god if you sell me a laptop. Um... That's... Okay, I'm just going to not say anything, because I'm going to say something stupid if I respond to that. I'm trying to repair this keycap here. I kind of crushed it with my screwdriver as I was attempting to get this back in. I kind of scratched the keycap and didn't like that. It didn't approve. Sebi's Random Tech, how to repair keycaps on laptops. These ones are, you know what, forget it. I have like 50 other keyboards here. I can just steal one of their keycaps. I don't break those too. The annoying thing about these is that um, there are different manufacturers for these keyboards, so not all of them have the same switch mechanisms. Can you even get these out? I don't know. Probably not. Will this void my warranty? Do you plan on doing more videos in the near future? Yes, I do. Um, if I don't die from school, I will do more videos. I've been pretty busy with school the last couple weeks, and um, just haven't had time to make videos. I mean, I have a ton of projects I'm working on, some of which are related to the T440P. Not necessarily this one, but other ones. Just haven't had time. And for me, school comes first. 
I'm paying thousands of dollars in tuition every year, so I might as well make the most of it. I'm just going to say screw it for the down arrow key for now, because it's being a pain in the ass. And I don't like pains in the ass. Okay. Holy crap, the W700 is a beast. Yes, I do actually have a W700. It's sitting in a storage container. Because I'm going to try and upgrade a few of the parts. Because it's basically the base configuration. And I want to upgrade the story or the graphics card and the CPU. Because the W700 actually has an upgradable graphics card. The W700 series is the only thing pads I know of that have an upgradable GPU. So... Yeah, I'm definitely going to do a video on that at some point. Once I can get some parts for it. And there's the 9-cell battery sticking on the back. Okay. Now I'm going to just plug the power adapter in. Okay. Turn on me. Hey, we got a screen. And we have to set the date and time. Okay. <clears throat> date and time. It is definitely not 2001. Two. Is it February 1st? It is. Right? Yeah, so very first. But it is not 2001, that's for sure. No, go away. Okay, it is 2019. Okay, what time is it? It is 10.48, Eastern Standard Time, United States. So that'd be 22... 48. Okay. And before we get too far, I'm going to grab my handy little USB drive that has Windows 10 on it. We're going to install Windows 10. It's going to be fun. Can I zoom this out? You guys can't see what I'm doing. Now you can see what I'm doing. Look at that beautiful 1080p screen with nothing on it. Okay, exit saving changes. Whew. Actually, there is one more thing we need to do since we're installing Windows. We need to uh, set it to UF UEFI BIOS. Um, I believe for that, startup UEFI first. Um, put that up. Okay. <clears throat> so now we will be installing Windows 10. The screen looks beautiful, doesn't it? For some reason it restarted. We get it, you don't like Windows 10. Okay, this computer really doesn't like Windows 10. <laughs> there we go. Windows 10 setup, 64-bit. And while that's loading, we can uh, possibly attempt to fix this darn switch mechanism that doesn't want to work. Mm-hmm. 
You should try using Linux instead of Windows. Well, this laptop is not for me. It is for a friend, and he wants Windows. Laptop, you can choose which BIOS you want. Yeah, you can use Legacy or UEFI. And if I'm doing Windows, then I'm just going to do Windows or UEFI. What is my major in college? You're going to laugh so hard. My major has nothing to do with music or media production or anything. I'm actually majoring in music education. Um, huge fan of music, believe it or not. Uh, computer stuff I just do on the side for fun. And, uh, don't have a product key. Because it says a Windows 8, or, yeah, it has a Windows 8 Pro key on it. So, Windows 7 and Windows 8 product keys can be used to install Windows 10. They will work. So if you have a Windows 7 Pro key, you can use it for Windows 10. If you have a Windows 8 Pro key, you can use that for Windows 10. And then accept. Custom. This has a previous installation of Windows on it from when I was screwing around. Whoa. Click Next. Now it's going to install Windows. Still trying to get this stupid... Uh, Scissor switch fixed. Because I accidentally popped the... Oh. Oh, almost. Oh. Is it in? Yay, it's in. Cool. Okay. Um, now I just need to... There we go. Just need to pop that back in there somehow. Get to see my beautiful hair. Can't wait for it to start going gray and bald. Forgot how hard it is to get these keys back on. Who else is commenting? Who would you suggest Windows for? It's not my suggestion. It's, um, just what the guy wants. Who would I suggest Windows for? Is that asking why I suggested Windows to this guy, or why, or what reasons would I use Windows? I guess familiarity is one, because, um, I mean, I've used Windows my whole life. When I was a little kid, we had a Windows 98 computer. Then we upgraded to XP and eventually 7, and um, my parents are still running Windows 7. I have a mixture of computers running Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows 10. I actually used to have Linux installed on an old R51 ThinkPad I had. I had a dual booting with Windows XP. Um, unfortunately, the motherboard in that system died. Um, so whatever. And I just broke another key. I'm really ready to just say fuck it with these keys. So it's whatever. It's keyboard. So now instead of having one key to fix, I have two keys to fix. Hooray.
That would explain so much. I put it on backwards. Maybe. Almost got this one back on. Let's go. Let's go. No. 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 Darn it. Screw the keys. Screw the keyboard. Doesn't this screen look so nice? I mean, it's beautiful. Boba Fisher, who would I suggest Windows for? Thank you. Um, restart. Take our USB drive out. We won't need that now. I have a bag full of flash drives I have with different Windows versions on them. So I have Windows 10 on here. I have another one with Windows 8.1. Another one with uh, Windows 7. And then one with Mac OS Mojave, because occasionally I do work on MacBooks. Not very often, though. I'm not Lewis Rossman. Max backward keyboard. Minus two keys, because this keyboard is being a pain. I'm probably going to use a different keyboard when I sell this to that guy, because some of the keys on this side are very crusty. They don't want to stay in there too well. Like, this one in particular is really bad. The shift key is not that good. I just broke two of the arrow keys, and the control key here is pretty bad, too. So, this keyboard had a hard life, whoever owned it previously. Zoom in a bit here and see the lovely world of Windows. Getting things ready. Might take a while. What suits your needs in music? What do you mean by that? What suits your needs in music? Not entirely sure what that question means. I mean, like, what kind of music do I like? What instruments do I play? What, what do you mean? <laughs> Another restart. There we go. Dead silence. You never want dead silence when you're broadcasting. Can you explain how, if you get a used laptop with no hard drive, how do you install Windows from a flash drive? Don't you need to buy a new copy? Um, so you can just go to Microsoft's website and download this thing called the, I believe it's called the Windows Media Creation Tool. Um, so you can download this Media Creation Tool and then it installs, it makes an install disk for Windows 10, you can burn it to a DVD, you can burn it to a USB flash drive. I usually do the flash drive because um, then I can rewrite a newer version of the Windows install to it if needed. With DVDs, once you've burned to them, unless they're rewritable DVDs, you can't really do that. Um, I don't have to buy a new copy because these laptops have Windows product keys on them. Uh, with most newer laptops, there's a Windows product key embedded into the BIOS. So this has a Windows 8 point or Windows 8 Pro product key embedded into it. So once Windows gets done doing its thing here, then it can uh it'll automatically detect the BIOS and it will um or it'll, it'll detect the product key and activate it. Um and then so that's the, yeah, so the product key isn't 
What do you think about people throwing away old laptops like T400 and T46 or T60s? That is a travesty. People should not be throwing out old ThinkPads or any laptop, um, unless it's a MacBook Pro. Those can be thrown out for all I care. Um, but yeah, so there we go. I was starting to get worried that it was going to hang there. Um, but yeah, so the Windows product key is on older laptops, it's a little sticker on the bottom, like here on this T440, it has a uh, has a product key for Windows 7 there. Have fun with that. Windows is going to hate me for that. Um, and then, uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, the older ones have the sticker. The newer ones, it's usually embedded into the BIOS, so Windows will automatically detect that upon installing. Uh, you don't need to buy a new disk of Windows every time you install it. You just need to have a different product key. And like I said, Windows 7 and Windows 8 product keys will work with Windows 10 if you're doing a clean install. You cannot upgrade directly from 7 or 8 to 10, but if you're doing a clean install, you can use a 7 or 8 product key. Okay. So the reason... Yes, it's United States. Okay, skip. Let's connect you to a network. I'm going to skip this for now because it never wants to connect when I'm doing a fresh install. Once I've finished setup, it will connect to a network. And I'm going to name this James because that's the name of the guy who's buying this. I'll let him pick the password. And no, we do not want Cortana on here. Do no, 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 hell no. No, no, and no. Okay. And now it's just going to finish a few things, and then it'll be done. Installing. Then we have to do drivers and stuff. Two times... what? Three Windows copies on the bottom. Two for Windows 7, one for Windows 10. Can I have one? <laughs> I'm still waiting for Boba Fisher to... Uh, I just bought a T410, and it's still amazing. Yeah, I like the T410. My parents use a T410. They love it. Um, still waiting for Boba Fisher's um, response, because I asked what he or she meant by um, what suits your needs in music. Because it's not entirely clear what the answer to that question is. <clears throat> but yeah, this um, 1080p panel, it's an aftermarket panel, but it works really well. It has a very good picture. There isn't very much backlight bleed or ghosting. Um, there's actually less of it than with my genuine ThinkPad X240 1080p screen. That has more backlight bleed than this aftermarket T440p screen. Um, you do have to be careful with aftermarket screens because not all of them are good. Some of them are really good and some of them are crap. What did that upgrade LCD screen cost? I paid $55, $56 for it off of eBay. Um, it was literally the cheapest 1080p screen for the T440p. And uh, usually you want to do a little more research than that, but I had no problem with it. So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of this awful scaling. Because who the hell uses scaling? 150%, that's way too high. So we're going to go down to 100%. That looks much better. If we're going to have a 1080p screen, might as well make use of it. I can't wait to replace this touchpad because it's terrible. Okay. Connect. Gonna. I never realized how great T-Series ThinkPads were until I watched Sebi's videos. Thank you. Mac OS is a better console than ThinkPad. A better console? Okay. Um, just bought one on Amazon for $50. I have Dell Latitude D430. Good for running old Windows. Yeah, Dell Latitudes are decent. They're not They're not terrible. Um, 
I'm going to tilt the camera up because I don't want you guys seeing my Wi-Fi password. Not that I care because it sucks, but still. Should be connecting the internet. The other annoying thing about my network is I always have to turn off the internet and turn it back on to get things to connect. Because other times it just doesn't like to work. So I guess at this point the only thing left to do is install the necessary drivers for this machine. Um, now installing drivers on Windows is very easy because Lenovo has a nice utility on their website called Lenovo, or it's in the Windows Store. It's called Lenovo Vantage, and it's very, very just easy. So, I'm going to install that first. Lenovo. Vantage. Install app. Now, the Microsoft Store is kind of weird. Sometimes it lets me install it. Other times it forces me to log into my... Yeah, like right now it wants me to log into my account. Which I don't have an account, because I don't really use this. Let's see if it just... I don't get it. I don't get why I have to log into an account just to install Lenovo Vantage. Oh, now it's working. Oh. Now it's working. Yay. Cool. Yeah, Lenovo Vantage, it's kind of a bunch of the other old Lenovo utilities from Windows 7 and earlier put into one program. So, like, it has the driver update utility. It has the power manager. All that stuff built into one program. And, and it handles everything, like BIOS updates and stuff. So, it's a nice little program. Does the T-Series have those USB ports that are always on even if your computer isn't so you can use your ports for charging? Yes, it does. Um, on the T440P, it is over on this side, and it has a little battery indicator next to the USB port. And you can actually change the settings in the BIOS to have it always on even if the machine is turned off. Um, on these newer ThinkPads, it has the battery indicator next to the USB port. On these older ThinkPads, like I T430 here, it has a yellow port. If it's a yellow port, it's always on. I believe that was introduced with the T410, the X201, W510, and the W701. Because my friend has a W701 and it has the always on port, but my W700 does not have the always on port. And now you get an idea of how slow my internet is. I don't know how well you'll be able to see. Right now it's going at a speed of 4.3 megabits per second. It's probably taking longer because I'm streaming a video. Can't confirm using T400 right now. Why the blue US... The blue USB ports, um, they're USB 3.0 ports. Um, blue USB ports are USB 3.0. My Vantage button on my SL410 doesn't do anything when I push it. Yeah, it doesn't do anything with newer versions of Windows. Um, back, way back in the older versions of Think Vantage software, it did, if you pressed it, it would give you access to utilities. But nowadays, it's pretty much just a dead button. Um, what laptop would you interest for a student with interest in downloading music, playing movies, writing essays, and research. Um, I'm going to recommend a ThinkPad because I love ThinkPads. Um, it really depends on what, how much power you're going to be using. Like, if, like a T440P is a pretty decent laptop, but if you want something a little more portable, regular T440 is pretty nice. If you upgrade the screen and everything, it all has nice keyboards. The X-Series ThinkPads are also nice. Okay, now we're going to launch the Nova Vantage. 
Now this is the annoying thing about these. You have to install an update before you can use all of Lenovo Vantage's features. Um, so we're going to install the update right now. We're going to wait for that. that that's going to take forever. It's a 351 megabyte file. So that might take a while. <laughs> anyway, so getting back to your question. Um, yeah, T420 and T430 are also good. A reliable ThinkPad that is low budget and gets the job done. Yeah, T420, T430, uh, T440P. If you want something a little bit thinner and lighter, you can get a T430. Uh, can you talk about the optional swappable batteries for the T440P? T440P does not have swappable batteries. Um, they're not hot swappable. They can be removed by the user, but they don't have the hot swappable batteries. That is only on, like, this T420, or T440, sorry. So the T440, it has... Let me zoom that here. Maybe. So T440, X240, many of the newer ThinkPads, they have an internal 3-cell battery, and then they have an external 3- or 6-cell battery, and this one has the 6-cell battery, so it sticks out. And so it drains the battery from this first, and then it will drain this. And um, let's say this battery dies, you can simply unlatch it, remove it, and install a new one without even turning the computer off. So that's on the T440. It is not on the T440P, um, as disappointing as that may be. So many newer ThinkPads have that. However, Lenovo is starting to move away from that. Like the X280 does not have it. The T480S does not have it. The regular T480 and the T580 still have the swappable batteries. Um, what's stupid? I don't know what's stupid. Why doesn't the better laptop have it? Because this is meant to be a mobile workstation performance laptop, and it's not a thin and light ultrabook. Uh, the T440 and T440S value battery life more than power. T440P is all about power. That's why it has, like, the nice dedicated GPU, the graphics cards, um, quad-core processors, 1080p screen, 16 gigs of RAM, while the T440 and T440S are limited to 8 or 12 gigabytes of RAM and have Ultrabook processors. So, yeah, let's see. We have 15% of System Interface Foundation.exe downloaded. So basically, I have no idea what this program does, but I know that many times when you install a fresh install of Windows and you install Lenovo Vantage, you have to install a system update before you can use Lenovo Vantage. And then once that's done downloading and installed, then we can um, install all of the drivers. Now, the driver for the touchpad is tricky. If it's um, the T440's standard clunk pad, as I call it, then you won't have any issues with the drivers for Windows 10. If you have a T450 touchpad installed, then you're going to have to do some hunting to find a driver that works. And sometimes Windows Update or Lenovo Update can kind of mess with the drivers. In fact, just this morning, the um, T440 I'm using, Lenovo installed an update and it screwed up my touchpad, so I had to reinstall the driver myself. This T440P is a pretty uh, lower spec laptop. It had a 40, uh, Core i5 4200M installed. I installed a 4300M. It's not a massive difference at all, but I just did it to um, improve the speeds a little bit. The guy I'm selling this to is not going to be doing anything hardcore on it. And if he does decide he needs a processor upgrade, he is capable of doing that himself. He built his own desktop and everything. He just didn't want to upgrade the screen. So, <clears throat> excuse me. I have another T440P here, and it has a 4300M, and I bought a 4700, uh, Core i7-4700MQ to install. So... I already did a video upgrading the processor in the T440P, so I'm not going to make a whole video out of that. But once this is upgraded, I will be featuring the T440P in another video. 26% of system donation. <clears throat> Battery misreports is 100 instead of 36%. It might need to be recalibrated. I believe uh, if you... Uh, what is upgrading? The Lenovo app. Uh, yeah, Kenneth. Um, so, when you install a new, uh, fresh install of Windows, sometimes an interface update needs to be done 
in order for the Lenovo Vantage app to work properly. I don't know why it needs it, but I know that I can't use the Lenovo Vantage app until it installs that update. Again, I have no idea what it's for. And William341, um, your battery's probably pretty old. I don't know how old it is, but if it's misreporting how much battery life is left, then that's a problem. The best way I can think of is to try and calibrate it by fully discharging it and then charging it back up a few times. Sometimes that will recalibrate the internal sensor and you'll start getting more reliable estimates on your battery life. Core i7-4900MQ, that's a good, that's a good, um, that's a good processor. I was looking at getting a 4900MQ, but it's like three times the price of a 4700MQ, and it's not that much faster. I paid $53 for the 4700MQ off eBay, and the cheapest 4900MQ I could find was like $120, $130, something like that. Battery life with the 4900MQ, I have no idea, because I've never used a 4900MQ. But I have a 4700MQ that I will be putting in a different ThinkPad, and once I've done that, I can... Uh, see how the battery life compares between a Core i5 and a Core i7. Um, and it also depends on what tasks you're doing. Like, if you're just browsing the internet or taking notes, you can expect the battery life to last a pretty long time. But if you're, like, playing games or doing video editing or other productivity work, then you can expect the battery life to not be as long. Have you experienced prejudice towards Linux users? The only thing is that it only happens when I restart the laptop. I see. Um, 41% of system interface. Yeah, so, oh, I got the 4800MQ for 60 and the 4900 for 100. Nice. Still not going to pay twice as much for a processor that is negligibly faster than the 4700MQ. 4700 is really good, uh, price-to-performance ratio, I think, because um, 4900MQ is twice the price, sometimes more, and is definitely not twice as fast. T430 versus X230. I actually have both right here. This is my trusty T430. If I can zoom out. It's my T430. I've had it for about two years, and it's really reliable. I like it. I have a 3612 QM processor in here, which I did a video on me installing that, and I actually swapped out the board for one with an NVIDIA NVS uh, dedicated GPU. So it's a pretty nice machine. I have a 6 battery in it right now. Um, and then I have an X230 with an Ultra Base, which I did a video on. Here's the Ultra Base. It adds an optical drive and some extra ports to the machine. I did a video on this about a year ago, two videos actually, where I upgraded the screen to an IPS, and I put in, if I open it up here, got a classic keyboard in there. X-Series is not an entry-level ThinkPad. The entry-level ThinkPads are like the Edge Series, the L Series, um, ThinkPad Chromebook, ThinkPad 13. The X-Series has always been a premium, ultra-portable laptop. And yes, the 40 bucks is not worth the difference in speed bump. Okay. That's wonky. What the heck? What happened? Edge got screwed up. <laughs> That's funny. This is why I love Windows. It screws up all the time. For no real reason. I might have to do a cold restart. Yeah. Okay. I don't know why it screwed up, but it did. So we're going to restart this. See, this is why I love Windows. <clears throat> love your vids. High quality and detail for a small channel. Thank you very much. What GPU did you use with the X230? The X230 does not come with a GPU. It never has. The, the only X-Series thing pad that has a dedicated GPU is the X1 Extreme with the GTX 1050 Ti. Um... But yeah, so, 
Other big differences, um, the older ThinkPads, the T-Series had upgradable processors like this T440P. X-Series laptops have always had. Oh yeah, so about a year ago I did the videos on the X230, and um, I was thinking about doing an external, uh, hooking up an external GPU to it with an express card slot to uh, PCI Express adapter. Never really did that because I ended up building a desktop instead for my uh, more graphically demanding needs. Excuse me. Um, why did the display change? Love you so much, Windows. Yeah. Come on. 100%. There we go. I don't know if, I don't think it installed the update. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't finish installing the update. Thank you, Windows. Okay, downloads. Okay, I guess we have to install our download again. Great. And this time I'm just going to save it so I don't have the issue of it disappearing when uh, Windows restarts. <sighs> Best ThinkPad ever. That's a very hard choice. In my opinion, it would have to be an X230 or T430 with IPS screen and classic keyboard. And with the T430, T430 with an upgraded cr uh, processor. Don't like the X series because the CPUs are not upgradable. Well, then you wouldn't like any laptop newer than the T440P because they stopped having upgradable processors in all laptops after that. Unless you get one of those really big gaming laptops with a desktop processor. How's battery life with the T440? It's a lot. Yes, uh, T440, the battery life is much, much better than the T440P. And that's for two reasons. Uh, for one, the T440 has the dual battery life system, or what's it called? Um, power bridge system, there we go, because it has the internal three cell battery and the external three or six cell battery. But it's also much better because the T440 uses Ultrabook uh, low voltage CPUs, they're only like 15 watts, while the T440P uses mobile processors that have 45 watt TDPs, so they use a lot more power. And they're much they perform much better, but you sacrifice battery life for that. Um, my T440, it has, um, both batteries are brand new. I have an internal three, so three cell and an external six cell. And I get anywhere between like nine and 12 hours out of it. Um, I just know I can get through two or three days of classes before I need to charge it, which is nice. This one with a nine cell battery, it lasts I don't know, anywhere between like five and eight hours, maybe nine hours. Um, how much is an IPS screen and decent processor for T430? So for the IPS screen in a T430, you have to um, get a mono, uh, adapter kit off of eBay or AliExpress because the T430 doesn't natively support any IPS screens. Uh, but you can buy this converter kit off of eBay for like $60 or something. And um, then once you do that, you can get a 1080p screen, actually the same kind that's used in the T440p, and install that into T430. I haven't done that with mine yet, but I'm looking into doing that for a future video. Do you like the T430 better than the T440p? Why? Because the T430 has the classic ThinkPad design and the T440p does not. And... Um, I just like having things like the Think Light, the indicator LEDs, uh, classic keyboard, that sort of stuff. The only real downside is the integrated graphics aren't as good, neither is the battery life, and um, the processors aren't quite as fast as a maxed out T440p. Also, the T440p has the M.2 SSD slot, which is much better than the MSATA slot in the T430, because the MSATA slot in the T430 is limited to SATA 2 speeds and the M.2 slot in the T440P runs at, say, to three speeds, which is a little bit better. Um, the only other downside of the T430 is it has TN panels. It doesn't have IPS unless you get the adapter kit, like I said. Um, the IPS screen for the T430, 
it's like this one, so 55, 60 bucks, plus another $50 or whatever for the converter board. Um, so the system interface thing, there's really nothing going on right now. Um, we're just waiting for system interface .exe or whatever to download. So I guess I can show you my uh, desktop. It's an HP monitor, 23F is the model name. I bought it from Best Buy for like $110. My desktop is a repurposed Dell Vastro. It was originally a Dell tower. I uh, made some upgrades to it. It has a Core i7-3770 in it, which is insanely fast. Um, and it has a GTX 1080 GPU, 16 gigs of RAM. The T430 was the last ThinkPad to have classic ThinkPad features. Yes, it was. It was the last ThinkPad with the ThinkLite to have indicator LEDs for hard drive and wireless activity. It had the latches for the screen. Um, has the old barrel style power connector. Um, with some tweaking, you can get um, the classic keyboard into the T430. Because the T430 introduced the island style keyboard. like So... The T430, those were the first ThinkPads to have the Chiclet keyboard, but they can very easily be swapped for a classic ThinkPad keyboard, such as what I did with my X230, which, as you can see, has the classic keyboard. And it looks fantastic. It feels fantastic. So, yes, the T430, W530, X230, those were all the last classic ThinkPads. Have you tried flipping laptops for profit? Yes, I do. Um, in fact, this T440P can be considered a flipped laptop. I bought it for $50. The parts I put in cost an additional $120. So that's $170, and I'm selling it for $250, which is pretty fair considering the um, specifications, mainly the screen and the T450 touchpad upgrades take up the cost, plus the fact that I, um, upgraded everything else inside. Now, if this were, now if I put, like, a quad-core i7 in here, I'd probably charge more for it. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. But my, uh, prices, they depend on a number of factors. Usually market value plays factor. So this is, this would be sold for a little bit more than the market value, but the 1080p screen is, like, a huge part of why it's more expensive. Um, if I still had a 1366, 768, or a 1600 by 900 panel on this, then I'd probably sell it for $200 or even less. Plus, the battery I put in is brand new. It's a brand new 9-cell. Um, and that accounts for something. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we're almost at 50%. I think it's at, like, 43 or something. Yeah, 44%. Okay. That was cheap. Yeah. I think I'm going to like the T430 more. Yeah. If you're looking at a used T440... That. I can't talk. If you're looking at a T440P, how can you tell if it has an upgraded screen? Uh, simply put the resolution. If it's a 1600 by 900 or 1366 by 768 screen... It's going to be a TN panel. The viewing angles are going to be crap, and the colors are going to be crap. If it's 1080p, it's IPS. Um, I don't know of any non-IPS 1080p panels that would work in this machine. Um, usually, if it doesn't say in the description for the product, you can ask the seller to check, and that's how you would know. Like I said, if it's 1080p, then it's the upgraded screen. It's IPS. It's fantastic. If it's not 1080p, then it's a piece of crap. <laughs> It's a massive piece of crap. Um, trying to think. Other times, sometimes, sometimes, depending on the what's on the screen, you can actually tell just by looking at it. If you notice the colors are really inverted or look wonky from an off-axis position, then that would uh, tell you that it's a TN panel. Also, if you can see um, the if, if the background is black and it shows up as like a very dark gray then it might be a TN panel, but that's not an accurate thing. If you can't look at it in person, it's kind of hard to tell for sure unless you ask the resolution of the screen. Uh, 
Um, but like what I mean is, so my T430 has the TN panel. So like if, if we're on the standard, like if we're looking head on, it looks okay. But as soon as I start to tilt it away, you can see the colors invert and they get really wonky. And then the same thing, they get really off once you get off angle like that. And if this were a black background, actually, I'm going to bring up a black background. Um, my internet is really slow right now. <laughs> Look at how bad that looks. In-plane switching, yes, that is in fact what IPS stands for. Jeez, oh man, my internet's being really slow right now. <laughs> Probably because I'm streaming. I'm amazed it's lasted this long. Okay, there we go. Um, okay, so I have so like this is a pretty dark background, but like you can see a lot of backlight bleed when you're looking at it, and like, yeah, so like this is supposed to be solid black, this square here, and it's very obviously not solidly black. Um, doesn't matter how you look at it, doesn't matter if you're looking at it in person or through the camera, it's very obviously not true black. And IPSs get a lot closer to that. They have much better contrast than a TN panel. So like, if you're looking at this, then black actually looks black. Um, it doesn't look like a muddy dark gray color like on here, which is kind of the opposite of the laptop's colors. T430 is like solid matte black, and the T440 and T440P are that muddy dark gray color, which is kind of funny. And I accidentally opened up optical drive. <laughs> yeah, so T430, got a think light, like that. This has the chiplet keyboard, but you can easily put in a classic keyboard. Physical touchpad buttons latch for the screen, and it's all the classic IBM design. Fantastic machine, very durable. And I saw a question. Thank you for all you do to promote the older ThinkPads. Yeah, I tried to. Um, one of my friends from school last year, I sold him an X230 and he loves it. Um, 98%, 99%, woohoo! We're almost done installing this stupid system interface thing. Woo! Um, but yeah, um, a friend of mine last year. Okay, now we're gonna run this. Run. There we go. Boom. 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 Um, yeah, a friend of mine, I sold him an X230 last year, he loves it. Someone else in my school last year, I sold him a T420, and he still loves it. And, um, this T440P is about to find a happy home. Um, so, yeah. Are they viable for use today, or just nostalgic? Pretty much any Lenovo-era ThinkPad that has Core 2 Duo, Core i5, Core i7, they are usable for most daily tasks. Um, like my video I made a few months ago where I used the T60 as my daily driver. Um, they're still very useful, um, as long as you don't throw anything too demanding at them. Like, if you try to run a brand new game, like, I don't know, what, what's a new game? 
Fortnite. That's a popular game. If you try running Fortnite on a 13-year-old T60, it's going to crash and burn. Uh, but if you're just using it to take notes, browse the internet, do some uh, PowerPoint stuff like that, it's perfectly fine. And, um... Yes, the Advanced Dock does have some other legacy ports that aren't present on the ThinkPad itself. Uh, like I talked about in my ThinkPad Buyer's Guide series, I think the cutoff is pretty much 2006, for ThinkPads at least. If it's older than 2006, it's going to have the old single-core Pentium M's. They're not going to be that powerful, and unless you do very, very lightweight tasks on them, it's going to be painfully slow. Um, the Advanced Dock, yes, the Advanced Dock is very expensive. I got a very good deal on mine. I only paid like 30 or $40 for it. I'm pretty sure the guy didn't know what he had, and that's why he was selling it so cheap. And it even came with the keys, which is good, because the for the advanced dock, you actually need the keys in order to use it, unlike the other ThinkPad docks that you can use perfectly fine without the keys. Yeah, I know, it's crazy. <laughs> um... You just have to look around for them. Just look on different websites, Craigslist, Macari, OfferUp, LetGo, eBay. And sometimes if you're really, really lucky. What are the keys? I will show you what the keys are. So, ThinkPad docking stations come with these little keys, complete with the ThinkPad logo and you can use them to lock the laptop in place. So you put them into a key hole on the side, and it locks the laptop in. And of course, somebody can rip it out, but if you rip it out, it's gonna be obviously damaged, and everyone will know that it was stolen. And now we have to restart the computer. Then we can start installing all of our updates. Yes, the keys lock the dock. And it's not just the ThinkPad Advanced Dock that has the keys. Pretty much every ThinkPad Dock in existence has them. Uh, for example, the Ultra Base on my X230 has the keyhole. But I did not get the keys with it. But thankfully, you don't need the keys for the Ultra Base. Okay. Advantage. Now we're doing something interesting for once. You would think with an SSD it would load liquidity split, but no, of course not. Usually it takes a while to load the first time you're running it. Okay, so we're going to put on the Think Vantage toolbar. Now we have that lovely indicator down there. I'm going to set it up for home and office use as the owner. And we don't have a Lenovo ID, so we're going to skip that. Now we can start installing some updates. Um, I don't care. I don't need to tell you. Don't need to tell me how this works. I'm done this a million times. Can you guys see that okay? Yes, you can. No, you can't. Can't see anything. Okay. It's probably taking a long time to load just because it's the first time. Performance. Yay. Okay. So, for this we go to System Update. Check for updates. I'm going to turn off the auto install updates because when we install the T450 touchpad, if you leave the auto install updates on, it really screws things up. Now it's going to it's going to connect to the Lenovo servers to see what updates we can put on. There's probably going to be a lot since we just installed Windows. While it's doing that, I'm going to go to hardware settings and power and look at our battery. Remaining capacity, 102.84 watt-hours. Yeah, this is a brand new battery. <laughs> um, yeah, this will be really nice for the person who buys it, or for my friend who has this, because it's a 9-cell battery. So, it'll last him. It'll last him. 
go back to our updates. It's still checking, because, like I said, the internet connection at this place is piss-ass slow. Is it the T450 touchpad? Not in there now, but I will be installing it later. What's the main reason for the ThinkPad? ThinkLight. Was it like modern-day backlit keyboards? Yes, it was. Um, it illuminated the keyboard when you were in a dark environment. And they're very nice to have. Like, I'm a touch typist, so I don't need to have a backlit keyboard. But it's nice to have to be able to find certain function keys or something like that in the dark. Um, and yeah, on the T440P, you replace the touchpad with the uh, T450 touchpad. Currently, I do not have the T450 touchpad installed because I'm still waiting for it to get here. Um, but yeah, right now it still has the T440 touchpad in it. Um, yeah, most people, if you're a touch typist, you don't really need the backlit keyboard or the think light, but it's still nice to have, and I'd rather have it there than not have it. Um, that's what I usually like about ThinkPads. They put things there that you don't, like the track point. Most people don't use the track point, but it's nice to have the option there if you want to use it. Um, and I love the track point. I can't imagine using a laptop without a track point. Um, so much so that, like, so I have this MacBook Pro here I was working on, it needed a few parts replaced, but um, when I find myself using it, I like instinctively put my fingers where the track point would be, and then of course it's not there, and I get really sad. What makes the T450 touchpad better than the T440P's touchpad? I will show you. So the T440P touchpad Let me bring my example here. The T440P touchpad does not have physical buttons for anything. All of the buttons are controlled by software. And, of course, it doesn't work all that well. But, in addition, like, so you have to be very, very precise about where you put your finger or it's not going to work. In addition, these touchpads have a crap ton of travel that they really don't need to have. So it makes this very loud clunking noise, and it just doesn't feel good. And even if you use the touchpad, yeah, there's enough travel that sometimes you can it can mess up your uh, touch, like the mouse, if you... You get what I mean. <laughs> it sucks. Um, it just doesn't work all that well. Nobody liked it. Even people who don't use the track point didn't like it. So with the T450 an X250 and all other 50 series ThinkPads, Lenovo went back to using a uh, real button system. So this is my T440. I installed the uh, T450 touchpad into it. So now I have my physical buttons again. So that many people just prefer having the physical buttons, including myself. And even if you don't use the track point, the touchpad is just better because it doesn't make all that excess whenever you use it. So, it's like a real touchpad. And that's what I like about Lenovo. Whenever they fuck up, they admit to their mistakes and they fix it. Like, they introduced a battery whitelist on the T430 so you can't use aftermarket batteries. Lenovo realized their mistake, and with the T440 series, they got rid of the whitelist. With the T440 series, they put the buttonless touchpad on, and everybody hated it. So with the T450, they brought back the buttons. T450, they put a whitelist on the displays, and everyone got mad at them for that. So with the T460, they got rid of the display whitelist. And for years, they also had a wireless card whitelist, but I think with either the T450 or T460 or something like that, they got rid of the wireless card whitelist as well. And yeah, you cannot put a classic keyboard in the T430 and keep the backlighting. The ThinkPad 25 with the classic keyboard does have a backlight, but there's pretty much no way to get that into a classic th ThinkPad. So unless you get a ThinkPad 25, you're pretty much out of luck if you're trying to get a classic keyboard with backlighting. So we have a bunch of things we need to install. We have to install Intel Management Engine firmware, um, it has the uh, active protection system, so that's like, if you have a spinning hard drive and you drop this machine, um, it'll park the hard drive head so it doesn't damage the hard drive. 
um, all the other drivers BIOS updates which are needed um, what else do we have some management engine audio drivers and this is a good one this is something Windows doesn't pick up the ThinkPad hotkey features so we're going to install all of these so now it's going to download all those drivers and install them this is another reason I like Lenovo they give you this nice simple software to find and install all of your drivers instead of having to uh, browse the entire internet to try and find all the drivers and go to really obscure sketchy sites who needs buttons people who actually do work on their computers I'm a huge fan of the classic T420 keyboard so am I that is why I installed the classic keyboard into my X230 I actually do use the T440 as my daily driver for schoolwork. Um, I prefer the classic keyboard, but the T440 is much thinner, it has a better screen, and the keyboard is still really, really good. T440, T440P, T440S all use the same keyboards, and they're pretty good. The X240, on the other hand, it has a shrunken down keyboard, and I'm not a big fan of that, because it has less key travel and the keys themselves are smaller. The Chiclet keyboard does look cheap. However, the ThinkPad keyboards, even nowadays, are still leaps ahead of any other laptop keyboard, save for the $10,000 gaming laptops that have full-fledged mechanical keyboards built in. They also weigh like 20 pounds and need two power adapters to run. So besides that, ThinkPads nowadays still have the best keyboards of any laptop, even if the classic keyboards are still better. <clears throat> So now we're just, I'm going to move the camera a bit closer here so I don't have to leave it zoomed in like this. <clears throat> Been broadcasting for two hours, geez, oh man. I'll be right back. I'm going to get a drink because my mouth is getting pretty dry from all this talking and I don't want to blow out my voice because I actually care about my vocal cords. And there goes the T440 touchpad. We'll grab a drink. I'm back. Did your mom or dad work for IBM? No, they didn't. My dad actually used to have a ThinkPad for his job. I believe it was a T42 or T43. And I remember him using it whenever he came home from work sometimes. Nowadays, his company uses Dell Latitudes. I know, they're such traitors. But I do remember them having a ThinkPad whenever I was real little. And then when my sister went into high school, she got a ThinkPad. Um, it was used at the time. I believe it was um, it was an R51, actually, because that was the one that I used. She used that through high school. And then when she went off to college, she got a MacBook Air, and she gave me her R51. And that's how I got into ThinkPads. Yes, at least they do use Dell Latitudes. Um... Kenneth, this video is a huge source of information on ThinkPads. Thank you. Um, but yeah, so I started with the R51, and then I eventually got a T430, which I've been using for about two years. And I also got a T60 not too long after that. And then I also had a T43 for a while, which I actually showed in my uh, ThinkPad Buyer's Guide series. But I ended up selling it because I had no use for it. I still have the T60, um, and then I got into the X230. I had a T420S for a while. 
I had a, um, worked on a bunch of other laptops. T430, X230, those are the ones I've consistently had, and the T60. The R51 died of a motherboard failure some time ago, and I ended up just parting it out. And I've worked on pretty much every ThinkPad between the T43 and the T450. Do you still have the X220? I've... I don't think I've ever had an X220. I've had... I had had the X230 for about a year. I like to own robust electronics that don't break and feel tough as nails. ThinkPads fit that bill for me. Yes, they fit that bill for me, too. My T430... Actually, a little story here. My senior year of high school, that was not too long after I got this T430... I was doing, um, I was, I did the talent show at my high school. We, um, I was one of the MCs that year, and we did skits to, that basically made fun of our high school. And I was reading off the script, which I had on my laptop, and I dropped it off the stage. And we have a pit at our high school. We have a pit for the pit orchestra. So it dropped about 10 feet. Looks absolutely fine. And it was still on after I dropped it, too. I went to pick it up, and it was still on. So I have first-hand experience with the rugged durability of ThinkPads. And, uh... Love your vids. Using a W530 for mobile video work and watching on a P70. W530 still keeps up with the P70. I've always wanted to get a P70. Or P50. I saw a P52 on my local Craigslist uh, listings for a very good price, and I was looking at jumping the gun on it. But I have no need for a P52, so I left it. I'll see if someone else buys it, and if a couple weeks go by and nobody buys it, I will probably scoop that up before somebody else does. Yeah, 10 feet still works. And very little damage to it, too. Um... Can you recommend an eBay seller that sells good ThinkPad third-party batteries? I usually buy my third-party batteries from Amazon, but if you look on eBay, you can probably find some genuine ThinkPad batteries for about the same price as um, aftermarket batteries. The battery on here, it's a 9-cell battery. Bought it off of eBay, and it was advertised as a used part, but I just looked in the uh, Lenovo Vantage, the battery information, it only has eight cycles on it, and it still has all of its original capacity because it's a 100-watt-hour battery. And if I go to the uh, power... Show details. There we go. Like I said, the T440 touchpad is crap. But yeah, it has um, 102 watt-hours. So if I my camera off here yeah 102 watt hours and for some reason it still thinks i have the track point <laughs> look at that <laughs> look at that it's not supposed to do that <laughs> that's hilarious okay now it's back to normal um but yeah it has eight cycles on it and um it says it was made in 2014 and it was used in 2014 but it still has 102 watt hours and uh, these are actually different from the design capacity. So down here is the design capacity. And that's how much capacity the battery was originally designed for. And if we... Ah, the stupid track point. If we go up here, it shows the full charge capacity. That is the current maximum capacity. So you can look at this and you can actually see how much degradation has happened to the battery. So if this was designed for 100 watt hours and the full charge capacity right now is 82 watt hours, then the rechargeability of the battery has degraded by 20, 18%. So it has 82% of its original design capacity left. So that's why I like Lenovo Vantage. It's very useful. Oh no. Yeah, we lost our thing. You can go into System Properties on Mac to see the battery cycles. Yeah, that's true. You go, um, About This Mac, um, System Profiler, I think, or something like that. And, um, 
The top and bottoms of laptops really take the most abuse. Can you still order those plastic pieces new from Lenovo? Probably not for the older laptops. For the newer ones, you can. I don't know about the older ones, but you can find a plethora of new old stock parts on eBay. Do you feel eBay is the best selection to find? Best place to find the wide selection of ThinkPads. I love eBay, but I would like to have optional sources. You could try AliExpress. You could try, um... Honestly, you can try anywhere. Amazon, AliExpress, Newegg, Craigslist. Anywhere, really. I find these things all over the place. And why is the frame rate so low? Because my internet in my apartment sucks ass. Because they want you to pay for a plan to get better internet. And I'm like, to hell with that. I already have to pay thousands of dollars for school. I'm not paying extra money for internet. So, like, the internet here, it's really slow, but it works well enough. Still downloading updates. Ugh, this thing is slow. I think it, like, froze up on there. Oh, well. Excuse me, get a drink there. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. And I got this system back together other than those two stupid keys I broke. I'm probably going to swap out this keyboard for another one because some of the keys on this side are very flaky and not working like they should. So, yeah, let's see what I have here. I have the non backlit keyboard. Where did I put my other keyboards? I don't remember where I put my other keyboards. That's the problem. <laughs> They're somewhere. Somehow, someday, somewhere, there's a place for us. Anybody here ever seen West Side Story? One of my favorite musicals of all time. Okay, so this keyboard is broken. This keyboard's really broken. I have another keyboard coming with the um, T450 touchpad, so I'll just use that one, unless I can somehow fix this problem. So I found a place on eBay, or I found a seller on eBay who has uh, backlit T440 keyboards for $25, so I might get one of those. Is there ever a time when buying a used broken Lenovo is not worth buying? If the seller wants more for it than it is worth. So if he's trying to sell a completely broken T440P for $300, he's full of crap and he needs to go take a hike. But like if it's like this one, I paid $50 for it. Yeah, exactly. It depends on what's broken, how much time and money you would need to fix it. Um... Sometimes they try to sell these for more than they're worth, and in those cases, they need to go take a hike. Um, but if it's very cheap, and you can part it out and get some useful parts out of it to fix other machines, or if it's only one or two things, like if the screen's broken, that's pretty easy to replace most of the time. If it needs a new keyboard or if it needs a new battery, like those things are really easy. You can just replace them and be on your way. Um... I actually just bought an X201 off of eBay for $21, and the screen was dead, the backlight was out. So first thing I did was put in a new screen. Let me show you. I went to put in a new screen, and I plugged it in. And I could smell burning plastic. And I could see this on the connector. And then you can see the scorch marks here. And it actually melted the little plastic piece that's on the uh, screen assembly. So it's permanently melted into the display cable now. 
and upon further investigation, I found that there was liquid damage inside the ThinkPad. So ThinkPads are not immune to liquid spills, even with the spill-resistant keyboards. Um, but this guy must have, like, drenched the thing in water, and it must have gotten into the battery area. Because whenever I plugged the battery in, I would smell burning plastic, and this area would get really, really hot. But if I plugged in the power adapter, that wouldn't happen. So my guess is there's a short somewhere that shorted out the area between the display connector and the battery connector, because those are very close to each other on the X201's motherboard. Like, the display connector is right here, and then the battery terminal is, like, right over here. So that must have shorted out somewhere. So, yeah, so in that case, need to replace the motherboard, need to replace the screen and the screen connector. That may not be worth it, but I only paid $21 for it. So I can part out the system and sell off the parts for more than I paid for the system. Um, alternatively, I could replace the motherboard and have myself a working system. GT710. GPU, not bad. Pentium Dual Core. Replace that Pentium Dual Core with a uh, Core 2 Duo. It'll perform a lot better. Or even a Core 2 Quad or Core 2 Extreme if the motherboard supports it. packing material all over the floor because I was taking this uh, out of the box. I thought about buying super cheap units to part them out, but I know how I am and I'll want to completely fix it. Yeah, I'm the same way. Like, I was actually going to part out this T440P because it had a lot of cosmetic damage and a lot of parts were missing. But, um, I just bought the parts I needed to fix it and voila, we have a fully working system. And it's pretty beautiful. Let's light up the keyboard. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? <laughs> but I'm thinking about um, ending the live stream here soon because uh, we did everything we needed to do. At this point, it's just a matter of uh, waiting for all the drivers to install, and then that's it. Um, maybe when the other parts get here, like the... Uh, T450 touchpad and everything, I may do another little stream like this. Um, but, I mean, I've been streaming for two and a half hours, and I need to get something to eat, and I'm probably going to get to bed soon because it is past midnight where I am. Yeah, but then we have nowhere to go. So sad, so sad. But before I end the stream, uh, do any of you guys have any extra questions, comments, concerns, points of interest? Um, anybody who has any additional questions, please let me know. I didn't know it was midnight. Yes, it is 12.04 a.m. where I am. Are you going to leave the video up? Yes, I am. That's the plan. Because, you know, it'd be nice to have a future reference for anyone who wants to watch this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure YouTube has the option to leave the video up once the stream ends. So that's probably what I'm going to do. Any other questions? Is there a Sandy Bridge Era ThinkPad with a full keyboard and numpad like the W541? I love my T520, but I miss not having a numpad. Um. Okay, yeah, there isn't, unfortunately, that I know of. Um, some of the cheaper Edge series ThinkPads from that era, I think, have a numpad. But, um, you could get a USB numpad that uh, you just plug in. The W701, which had first-gen i7 processors, that has its own dedicated numpad. But that's not a Sandy Bridge machine. That's the generation before Sandy Bridge. Um, but unfortunately, um, there aren't any ThinkPads besides the W701 
before the W540, W541 that have a dedicated numpad. Some of the really old ThinkPads, like the um, older T-series ThinkPads from the IBM era, you could actually get a numpad that went into the optical drive bay. So you could swap out your optical drive for a numpad. But um, that was way, way back in the IBM days, and I don't think Lenovo ever did something like that, unless somebody's wired up their own solution. Um, and, of course, um, the T520 does have the integrated Numera keypad, which I actually find to be quite useful. Your MacBook Pro 2011 with no backlight, you want to take off the screen and use it like a desktop. You could probably do that. I've seen people do that. V Westlife did a video like 10 years ago where he took an old ThinkPad and used it as a desktop. He took the screen off and used it as a desktop. He called it the IBM ThinkPad half top or something like that, and the video is still somewhere on YouTube probably. If not, then that's sad, but it might still be up somewhere. Um, any more questions? If uh, nobody has any more comments, concerns, points of interest, it is still up. That's good. Thank you. Um, if anyone else, if nobody else has any more questions, then I'll probably conclude the stream. So, if you have any more questions, now is your chance. Good night. Thank you, Kenneth. Good night. Yeah, I think that'll be it. Well, for those of you who watched the entire time, thank you very much. This is a long-ass stream. We're approaching the two-and-a-half-hour mark. And for those of you who just joined in recently, um, well, I will be leaving this video up. So, um, hope you guys enjoyed this live stream. Uh, let me know if you want me to do more of these in the future, if I'm working on a laptop or doing something like that. Um, I am also thinking about doing a video in the future or a live stream where I do a Q&A session if people are interested in that. But there would have to be enough demand for such a video for me to do that. But as always, hope you guys enjoyed this special live stream of Sebi's Random Tech. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, thank you for watching.